Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shalom Yamini. Each week, we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find inspiration that will complement your daily life and intensify your connection to God. This month, of the Parsha Perspective is being sponsored by Anonymous in honor of the Jewish people and the land of Israel. May Hashem protect our soldiers and may the Jewish people only experience success, health, and prosperity. If you or someone you know would like to sponsor a month of the Parsha Perspective, please contact us at our Facebook page, The Parsha Perspective. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Vayechi, the last Parsha in the book of Bereshis. Yaakov lives the final 17 years of his life in the land of Egypt. Before his passing, he asks Yosef to make an oath that he will bury him in the Ma'aras HaMachpelah in Hebron with his father and his grandfather. After Yosef took this oath, Yaakov blessed his sons, Menashe and Ephraim, elevating them to the status of his own sons as tribes within the nation of Israel. Yaakov then gathers his sons to assign them each a role as a tribe within the Jewish nation. After cursing some and blessing the others, Yaakov at 147 years old passes away in the land of Egypt. A large funeral procession consisting of Yaakov's children Power's ministers and the Egyptian cavalry accompanying Yaakov to his final resting place in the Ma'ar Samachpelah, which is in Hebron, in the land of Israel. When Yaakov gathers his children for the final time, the Pasuk says, Vayikre Yaakov el Banav, Vayemer, Heisifu va'agida, Lachem es Asher Yikare eschem ba'achris hayamim. Yaakov called for his sons and said, Gather, and I will tell you what will happen to you at the end of days. Rashi explains, the Va'agida Lachem means that he meant to tell them when Mashiach would come, but the Shekhinah departed from him, so he began to speak of other things, which were the blessings and curses that he gave his children. Many rabbis ask the question, why would Yaakov in the first place want to tell his children when the ultimate redemption would arrive? The answer is given, that Yaakov knew that Mashiach would only come thousands of years later. So by letting his children know how far along in the future the ultimate redemption would be, it would motivate them to take action to hasten his arrival. So now begs the question, why would Hashem make Yaakov forget the date of the ultimate redemption? If it was only meant to motivate the Jewish people to do good deeds that would only quicken the coming of Mashiach. To answer this question, we look at a very well-known cliche, knowledge is power. Like most cliches, this is true, that if you know your opponent's strategies before that board meeting, or if you have the other team's playbook before that game, you are surely setting yourself up for success. Having that feeling of being control and being the master of your fate. But that's only up to a point. Because imagine you knew everything. Imagine you knew exactly when and how you will die. That you will know in advance the details of every twist and turn in your life. Imagine that all the actions you will take over the course of your lifetime were listed and given to you with the results of each action noted at its side. Would you feel that you were in control of your life? Or would you feel like a pawn in a game of chess? Knowledge may bring power, but absolute knowledge will bring utter powerlessness. Furthermore, the knowledge of the exact date of the coming of Mashiach would have the opposite effect on the Jewish people. Instead of motivating them, it would allow them to glide by in life, impartial, indifferent to their actions, because they know that no matter what they do, Mashiach will come at its written date. It would also block and discourage any growth or advancement which is in complete contradiction to God's desire for humanity. Because according to the Torah, every action that we do has the ultimate significance to God. We have the ability to learn from our mistakes, to change and to grow. God's desire for humanity is to better ourselves. And with that, the world, to take this world from a physical state to a spiritual one that is worthy of God's complete revelation. So the reason that Hashem made Yaakov forget the exact date of the redemption is so that our actions are not mechanical and robotic, that we know that every deed is a meaningful contribution to the partnership with God, that we have free will, not only to make mistakes, but to learn and grow from them, which will change history because it will quicken the coming of Mashiach in our daily life. Every action we take whether spiritually or physically, has the ultimate significance. Because the future is not fully written. 
There is no fate we cannot change. There's no prediction we cannot defy because we make the future. By our choices, our willpower, our determination to succeed, and because we are created in the image of God, we have the freedom to choose. We have the freedom to choose to stay stagnant in our life or to learn from past experiences, change and grow, becoming greater than anyone, even ourselves, could predict. We have the ability to rewrite history, but only if we choose to do it. There is a great quote that I once heard. Yesterday's history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. Have a great weekend and a good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.